Welcome to Basic Energy Plus. Today we are going to continue from the Charles and the Paul's law. Today we are going to go for the combined law of Charles and the Paul's law. Apart from that, we are going to talk about the Gay-Lussac law and we are going to talk about the different sort of uh, questions that is being asked in REIT and JE and all these examinations. Today we are going to go for a lot of theoretical question as well as the graphical questions now if you haven't watched the previous videos you won't find any connections in between the videos so i just want you guys to go and watch the previous videos i make these type of tutorial videos for all the chapters so definitely subscribe to my channel and definitely uh, press the bell icon if you want to get notified whenever i load a video in my channel i am posting a lot of videos of the previous topics as well as for the topics of class 9th and the 10th as well so do check out all the videos in my channel and definitely do subscribe to it so right now we are going to uh, start where we left the last chapter so uh open if you you can see that we have talked about the charles law we have talked about the ball's law and right now we are going to talk about the graphical questions related to charles law now if you just see the question from the charles law what we have learned is pt is equals to p0 plus b0 into p by 273 where Pt is the volume at temperature T. One more thing, this T is in degree centigrade. Okay, it's not in Kelvin. B0 is the volume of the gas when the when the temperature is zero degree centigrade. When the temperature is zero degree centigrade, at that time you can say that this is the initial volume as well. Now they are asking you to find out the plot between Pt. Where the T is in degree centigrade and P, where the capital T is given over here, which means it's a Kelvin scale. So you need to find out the relation between VT and PT and capital T. So VT and capital T. That is what you need to find out to pass out this question. So first, let's find out what is the relation between VT and capital T. So if you just equate it, so it would be 273 into B0 plus B0T. Now what you do is you just uh, take B0 common and you have 273 plus small t by 273. Now guys, you can see that it's 273 plus small t. This particular thing can be called as temperature at Kelvin scale. So we have B0 into temperature at Kelvin scale divided by 273, which is equals to B small t. So that's your final equation. Now you compare these two. In your y-axis, you have B small t. And in your capital, in your uh, x-axis, you have capital so this is your y this is your x now if you think about y equals to mx plus t so if i just write it down somewhere over here so y equals to mx plus and now if you just compare the, this equation, let's just name them equation number one and equation number two. Just compare them. Okay. From the, if you just compare them, you would be able to see that this would be our M, Y, and X is given. So this would be our M, and C is zero. So over here, M is equals to D0 by 273. Now, guys, what do we understand by M? M gives us the slope of the reaction, right? It gives you the slope of the reaction. So from there, you can see this is the slope. 
and C is the intercept. Okay, intercept, which is zero over here. Now, what do you mean by intercept? Is the distance from the zero zero. So it's the distance from the zero zero point along y axis. So if you, if you see over here, from the initial zero zero point. Throughout the y axis, the distance you need to travel to start a straight line. Actually, uh, you know, you can draw a straight line from here, from here, from here, from here, anywhere in the y axis, right? C gives you the idea from where you need to draw it. So, over here, the C value is zero. So, you need to start from zero, zero point. Over. And then you have a straight line with a slope. Equals to b zero by seventy. So that's how you can find out the slope of these type of questions. Now, one more thing, guys. I could have drawn it in the opposite direction as well. Means, let me just show you. So I could have drawn the diagram like this as well. So from the zero zero axis, I could have drawn it like this. But I show this instead. Now, why am I doing this? Because if we just look into the slope value, that is B0 by 273. Now, guys, B0 is the volume at 0 degree centigrade. Can B0 be, ever be negative? No. So B0 is always positive quantity. So if B0 is a positive quantity, then the entire slope value is a positive quantity. If that's the positive quantity, then the react uh, then the uh, I mean the straight line would be on the positive direction. The this over here in this straight line, the slope is positive, right? And over here, the slope is negative. So, which straight line am I going to draw? I'm going to draw this straight line. Now, one more thing. If I just rub off the other thing, now guys, in the Charles law, which parameter was constant? Pressure. That is what we are finding out, right? So when the pressure is constant, at that moment, what is the relation between volume and temperature? This is called the Charles law. Now, if the pressure is varied, so like over here, let's say the speed, and let's say I am drawing another charge circle, which goes like this. Okay. And let's say here the pressure is PP. Now, the question is for you like, which pressure is there, P1 or P2? So, just pause this video and now think about this question and, and uh, then try to answer this. So, if, if you have tried it, I guess I all of you have got P1 is the higher pressure, right? Now, why is that, guys? Because when the pressure is more, the volume would be less. So, in the curve where the volume is less, that's the curve which is below. That's going to be the curve corresponding to the higher pressure. So considering that point, we can say that this is going to be the proper relation for this. Okay. Now, let's try to solve these particular questions from the chapter now. This particular questions. Okay. Now, see, let's try out our concepts for this particular question. You have to find out the plots of V versus 1 by T log B versus log T and uh, B by T versus T. So you need to find out these particular plots. So now you just try it out on your own first, and then just check the solution. We would go for the 
log b versus log t1 because this uh, is the most tricky among all these three so first what we are going to do is first you notice b and t both of them the t basically that's in the kelvin right and log b versus log t whenever something is written like that remember it is written that taken as y versus x so this one is y the first one which comes over there that's y axis and the other one is x axis that is how we are going to take it now guys you know that b varies with t from the charles law when the pressure is constant and the mass is constant so b equals to if i say equal there would be some sort of constant into t so log b would be equals to log k plus log t because do you do understand log b when we are talking about uh, making uh, you know operating b with a log function all the functions all the operators are uh, i mean all the numbers are going to get the same operators over there on the right side as well so log k and log t okay by the way this thing log k that's a constant value right so this is my final equation for log b versus log t now again let's do the same things like we did in the last question so like y and this is our x so considering this particular equation now for the straight line y equals to mx plus t so who is m over here guys if this is x this is log t is x then m n is plus 1 because this log t is getting uh, multiplied with plus 1 so that's why the m is plus 1 now you consider the c value from this particular equation so definitely the c value is log t so from there we can draw the diagram like from 0 0 axis we need to move up to the uh, intercept values which is log k then i have to make sure that it is a straight line with the positive slope so it would be going above up like that so this is our final equation and this is our final curve of log, log t versus log now you try out this particular question and see how is it coming how is the uh, line or the curve coming for this particular question so if i show you over here if i make a diagram of b by t versus t right let me see b by t versus t so b by t versus t now again from this particular equation you can see b varies t so from there i can write b by t is equals to constant so when something is equals to constant that means that means try to understand this portion if b by t equals to constant so it would be an act um a straight line parallel to y x axis so why is that because b by t equals to constant so if you change the temperature from 0 degree centigrade to 1 degree or to 2 degree or to 3 degree or to 4 degree or to 5 degree the values would remain the constant same because v by t value would never change so whatever the pressure you are changing i mean the pressure needs to be constant uh, sorry for that but whatever the temperature or whatever you are changing just make sure that do remember that that this is not going to harm the curve anyway because b by t equals to constant so the b by t value is never going to get changed so it would be a straight line parallel to the x axis okay so this is how you solve these type of questions now let's try to solve one question let's say i have a diagram of v versus t e. and the diagram goes like this t1 t2 t3 t4 now tell me which pressure 
is more which of the following pressures are more like first of all we need to understand throughout a particular line the pressure is constant that's why uh, uh, the diagram we make for the charles law they are called isobers they are isobers because bird is the pressure of they are the unit of pressure right so that's why whenever the pressure is constant we call it a isober so these all of them are isobers now you have to tell me which pressure is the most among all of them so pause this video now think about it and then play it so i guess you have thought about it and i guess you are you have an answer right now for me just check whether it's matching with the answer i'm going to give you right now so actually we had just solved a similar type of question you can see when the pressure increases the volume decreases so for the following or in all the diagrams that you can see you just have to find out the line with the minimum volume val value for, uh, from there you can get for uh, like which of the pressure is the maximum so this particular curve that is drawn in white this is having the minimum minimum b value throughout among all of them so this pressure is the maximum pressure and this would follow the trend like this are we clear now so this is how you need to solve these type of questions now the next equation is for k lisak's law so we have talked about p versus v so how pressure changes with volume then we talked about how volume changes with temperature in the charles law so right now that's only one combination left which is how pressure changes with temperature and that is called the gay lussac's law so this is nothing new that you are going to learn over here this is going to be just the same old thing you have to uh, you know you do remember the, the volume equation for charles law you just have to follow that same equation one uh, one more time so over here pt would be equals to p0 plus p0 into small t by 270 earlier it was dt and v0 now it is pt and p0 means pressure and temperature are proportional to each other okay so if you put more pressure the salt the gaseous particles will be show, uh, getting heated up okay so this is something we have seen earlier as well isn't it when you uh, fill air in a cycle in a tube of a cycle or in a football tube bladder you have seen that from where the air is going in that portion is getting heated up with time right so that's the a you know, real life example of this gay lussac's law then comes the avogadro's law now avogadro's law over here avogadro is famous for his mole concept right here as well he is going to use that concept over here so according to the avogadro's law v varies n but n is the number of particles number of particles is n so uh, it means let's say i have a balloon actually i have two balloons with one is with 1 liter of nitrogen the other one is having 1 liter of oxygen okay in which of the following we have more amount of um, particles that is what you have to tell me. so when according to the uh, avogadro's law when the volumes are same the particles are going to be the same as well yeah so how the combined gas flow coming so now see we have just learned that p varies t then we learned that v varies t then we learned that p varies 1 by v okay now we can write p by t equals to constant we can also write v by t equals to constant but here we are going to write p v equals to constant now if i just 
okay one more law was there b where is this n right now see considering equation number 1 equation number 2 and equation number 3 ठीक है ना इफ यू जस्ट कंबाइन ऑल दिस थ्री लॉज यू कैन सी द कॉम्बाइन लॉक वुड कम लाइक दिस तो पी इंटू वी पी वी इक्व टू कॉन्स्टेंट इट्स ऑलवेज कॉन्स्टेंट पी बाय टी इक्व टू कॉन्स्टेंट वी बाय टी इक्व टू कॉन्स्टेंट एज वेल सो पी वी बाय टी वुड बी कॉन्स्टेंट एज वेल राइट ना दैट्स द कॉम्बाइन कैश लॉक Now combined cash flow has a modification. PV by T equals to um, constant. This particular constant that we are talking about, na, it has a particular name actually. That's what I was stating. So that particular name is called universal gas constant. Universal gas constant, and this is denoted with R. So why what do we mean by universal gas constant it means it is throughout the universe the r value is never going to get changed that's why we call it pv by t which is known as universal gas constant okay so pv by t is equals to r this is something which is applicable for one mole for n mole So for n mole it would be n r. For one mole it was r. N mole it would be n r. So that's called the ideal equation. Okay, this is called ideal gas equation. That's the thing. Okay. Now let's move on to the next point. 